Robin Hood Radio presents Stage Right or Not with Michelle Willems. Michelle is a longtime journalist and herself is a published playwright of several theatrical works. She's a frequent contributor to the Huffington Post, Daily Beast, and the Atlantic websites. Another hope and all, another show. Well, the biggest and saddest theater news of the week centers on a man, a true genius that we lost. Today I'm going to save the best, and he was for last. But first, an interesting piece of news, one that may become more common if not necessary. The Second Stage Theater plans to sell a limited number of real-time virtual viewings in January for the final 16 performances of its current Broadway show, Clyde's. Now, the decision to stream some performances, which Second Stage views as an experiment, well, it suggests that some of the survival strategies theaters embraced during the pandemic could have a hangover, if not lasting effect. Yeah, old habits die hard, but maybe new ones do too. Anyway, playwright Lynn Nottage is in support of the idea. Now, she currently, or shortly, will have three shows on New York stages. Clyde's, fittingly, happens to be my first review of the week. Now, this one takes place in the kitchen of a truck stop diner or greasy spoon take your pick the characters are all ex-cons including letitia who broke into a pharmacy to obtain seizure medication for her daughter and Raphael, who was smitten with her and who held up a bank with a bb gun and then there is clyde a big anything but soft-hearted woman and the only employer in redding pennsylvania she claims who will hire such morons as she calls her staff Don't disappoint me by having aspirations, she warns. Whatever their checkered past, this likable little group turned their makings into art. As one character says, sandwiches that can transport you to another place. Clyde's is real life stuff, but also very funny. Yes, in moments bordering on sitcom-ish, with touches of magic realism, but it's ultimately very moving. There's even some clever choreography. The actors you may recognize are Ron Selfish Jones from This Is Us on TV. He's the zen-like sage here. And Uzo Adubo from Orange is the New Black. Now, she plays Clyde, the devil, in an amazing and a hilarious array of costume changes. In fact, are we in purgatory? Oh, who cares? Lynn Nottage has won two Pulitzers for her work with much time ahead for more. Now, Clyde's is one of about 10 shows that have opened on or off-Broadway recently, dealing with the black experience primarily. The most moving and even timeliest of the, is the second show that I saw this week. Yes, timely, though it was penned in the 1950s. Alice Childress's Trouble in Mind, which is opened at the American Airlines Theater, was originally produced in 1955 off-Broadway, and then it was derailed on its path to becoming the first play by a black woman to reach Broadway. Now that distinction, of course, went to Lorraine Hansberry and her Raisin in the Sun. Well, it is now a roundabout theater company production that I predict will take home Best Revival. I guess it qualifies for that. I have to think about that because it wasn't actually on Broadway. Anyway, it's an old play. And it could win Best Actress. Now that would be for LaShawn's, the dynamic woman we mostly associate with musicals. Well, not so here. She's part of a troupe of actors rehearsing a show. Yes, this is one of those plays within a play. I don't have a prejudiced bone in my body, says the play's director, the only white person on stage. Well, truly, many of these lines could and have been spoken aloud in the last few years. All the actors in this two-act play are excellent, but it's LaShawn's who gets the big splashy monologue at the end as she looks back on how her race has been portrayed over history. Trouble in mind reminds us that history is happening as we and she speaks. By the way, to prove this issue is not only in the past, black playwright Dominique Morisseau, one of the most successful today, just pulled her play off the Geffen Playhouse stage in Los Angeles after being told of several incidents of women in the cast and crew not being treated well. Due to unforeseen circumstances related to production, the remaining performances of Dominique Morisot's Paradise Blue at Geffen Playhouse have been canceled, came the announcement to ticket holders. We are very proud of the show and regret regret having to end the run at this time. Oh, yes, these are tender times. But on a happier note, cheek to cheek, 
Irving Berlin and Hollywood is a pleasant 90 minutes to experience. This comes from the York Theater Company here in New York, temporarily working out of a church space on East 76th Street. Cheek to Cheek is a lovely antidote to all the harsh happenings. There's no plot per se, just simple narration leading to a treasure trove of Berlin's amazing collection. Performed by six top-notch singer-dancers. A lot of great tapping here. Why it didn't end with White Christmas, I don't know. Please tell me it's not because of the title. Anyway, you'll be pleasantly entertained. Again, that's the York Theatre Company. Now, this has proved to be a year when many a stage show has been transferred to the screens. Tick, tick, boom. Dear Evan Hansen in the Heights. And now arrives Humans, the Tony Award-winning play of a few seasons back. My hunch is this was better up close and in person, but if you're interested in a claustrophobic, tense family Thanksgiving that is not your own, well, The Humans is in theaters and on Showtime now for just a month. Well, I don't know how long it'll be there. And in just a month, I will say West Side Story from Steven Spielberg and Tony Kushner arrives on the big screens. Which brings me to the big story of the week and the man who wrote the lyrics for West Side Story, Stephen Sondheim. It's fair to say that he was the theater's most revered, influential, and honored composer lyricist of the last half of the 20th century. Though his works could be challenging at times, as in Pacific Overtures and Passion. Ah, but where to begin? Sunday in the Park with George, A Little Night Music, Folly, Sweeney Todd, and two revivals I'll be reporting on in the next few weeks, Assassins and Company. It's not fair to say there will never be another Sondheim who died last week at the age of 91, but when I see popular shows today like Six, I truly have to wonder what musical theater has become and if it would even recognize or welcome another Sondheim. His music and words will live on forever. And don't forget, Jill, he wrote Send in the Clowns in one night to save one of his shows the following day. I think you can safely say that, uh, that, uh, there is, yeah, that's, uh, but the thing that I always found fascinating is that he shared a birthday. He and Andrew Lloyd Webber shared the 22nd of March as a birthday. Oh, interesting. And I just thought, well, all right. I mean, these these are two, these are two bodies of work that uh, are going to stand alone, you know, in the library for you, whatever you think. Well, that's right. They will stand. They will stand. They will stand the test of time. Both of them, very different kinds of work. Exactly. You know, Weber, beautiful, beautiful composer. Lyrics, you know, I don't even know if he did the lyrics. Most he didn't, I don't think. But beautiful composer. But this guy, oh my. You know, it's it was uh, I a. I mean, again, wish. not so much as he was ninety one. I don't know why people were surprised in a way, but because um, uh, well, yeah, yeah, because but, it uh, was it, be, because it was uh, as his lawyer put it, sudden. It felt it, those these things. My dad used to say, "All these people dying who never died before." You know, it just <laughs> sort of feels that way. You know, and I think because he has two shows up now being revived and he would he had gone to both of them he'd gone to see the first performance of assassins in previews and the same with company um both which i'll be seeing in the next uh week or so and i'm very excited uh and he was you know a great supporter i was once at a play uh, it was a one-man show nothing to do with him but there was laughter, the loudest laughter I'd ever heard. And everybody looked around to see who's got that booming laugh. And it was Stephen Sondheim. And when I told that to somebody who's in the business, they said, oh, he was always known as having the heartiest laugh. And I heard it <laughs> up close and personal. Anyway, very, very sad. And you know what they say about laughter being the best medicine, so. That's right. That's right. So anyway, we will uh, we will move on. And uh, so, is what 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 is the company chatter? And now, of course, the company chatter is uh, you know it came from London. Yes, and, and, it had and very it, good. Yeah, right. And it's it's, it's cross. It, shall we call it cross cast? Cross cast, and everyone, not just the fact that Bobby is now being played by a woman and not a man, but uh, a lot of the characters are crossed, you know, in different ways. Um, Again, apparently uh, was beloved in London, and it's in previews now. I'm going to one of the openings, and uh, Katrina Link is the lead, 
and she won the Tony whenever that was for uh, the band's visit. Feels like a hundred years ago. It was probably three. Um, anyway, that's uh, no, it's got good good buzz, and the Assassins didn't get as great a early uh, notices I'd expect, but that's one of my favorite shows, you know. So we shall see. But um, anyway, good chatter about uh, a lot of stuff. But, you know, again, we've talked about this. The big month is coming up. This is the big month. December usually does well because of tourism. January is a very do or die month for a lot of shows. And wouldn't be su- I wouldn't be surprised. I don't want to list them here. But, um, you know, there's do about five or six. In, do, you want, do, you, do you want to bury it in a time capsule? Yeah, that, about five or six. I would <clears throat> not be surprised if they don't go past January. All right. So for, for, for fairness' sake, write them down. Don't say them right now. But write them down today on the 29th. And we will check. Not not because we're not jinxing, jinxing anybody. We're just, you know. Right. And I hope they don't, you know. But I'm just saying that's a do or die month in Broadway. But let's... Let's be positive. And and speaking of that, it, it always has been. So it, it's not this. You, people tend to think that oh, this is. It's it, it, no January has always been. A, a it's very always cold the toughest month. month. Yeah, this obviously is tougher for we know you know why, um, and everything's tougher because of that. Um, which is interesting that Clyde's is doing that experiment of putting their last two weeks up on virtual. Uh, that's a really interesting thing to watch and to see if that leads to other people doing the same. Anyway, more to look forward to. Stage Right or Not with Michelle Willens, produced in the studios of Robin Hood Radio, robinhoodradio.com.